Hi, I'm Joshua Finn from j &H Aerospace, and this is the build video for the new Cat's Meow F1N indoor hand launch glider. This is one of the original Cat's Meows, the version 1 series with a wooden fuselage, much loved, belongs to my wife, uh, continues to win contests. Um, this airplane in category 2 ceiling heights do easily does about 45 seconds or so. Um, in typical gymnasium, it can get over 30 seconds. This airplane has done that on many, many occasions. Um, but is the, in the original version, with balsa wood fuselage, they're a little bit fragile. So we are updating the airplane with a carbon fiber fuselage, and we're going to show you how to build out that version today. There are several uh, tools and materials that you'll need to complete this airplane. So you'll need some CA accelerator and some CA glue. I recommend this uh, particularly for attaching the vector board foam flaps to the wings. You can use Duco cement or something like that if you're more comfortable with it for the other parts. But the CA works really good for the foam. You will want um, some razor blades. Um, this is a single edge. Uh, also, double-edged uh, carbon steel blades, if you can get those, those are preferable. We'll probably do the entire build uh, using just a single edge, though, because um, not a whole lot of super intricate parts on this airplane. Uh, you will want a razor plane, if possible. You can use sandpaper uh, entirely, but uh, it's easier if you have a razor plane. This is the Bruce Kimball plane. You'll have to contact me through our website. Um, to find out how to get these because uh, they're made by um, Bruce just as a kind of hobby side thing. Um, the Stanley mini planes can be made to work if you're willing to hone the blade. Also, uh, the David plane, uh, I think those are about $20. Uh, if you sand um, or polish and sand the lower surface, the, the block surface of, of those, um, they come out really nice uh, out of the out of the box. They're a little bit rough down here, whereas these and the Stanley planes are smooth down here. Uh, but like I said, on the Stanley plane, you have to hone the blade a little bit to get good cutting performance. Um, for those that want precision balancing of your plane, you can use the uh, glider balancer that we sell. Um, this airplane actually uh, pushes that to its limit. So if you'll um, if you see, there, we're running kind of tight on uh, clearance right there, but there's enough information that you can uh, figure out whether it's nose heavy or tail heavy, just like that. Um, also, this one has a an older grip that makes it a little harder to use on there. We'll, um, ideally, you have this up a little further forward. And then the last thing is you need a sanding block of some sort. This is the one that we sell. Um, you can make one from scratch, you can buy ours, uh, or, or what have you. Um, this is just a convenient shape for um, sanding uh, very precise um, shapes on your airplane. Let's uh, pop open the kit here, and we'll look at the contents. And before starting your build, you want to go through the contents of the kit to make sure everything is included. You will have several sheets of information on this airplane, so that it's going to include your parts list, photograph of the included parts, and then following that, you will have several piece, pages of data uh, for assembling this airplane. So since um, the carbon fuselages are something that, that we have uh, specified for this airplane. Uh, the patterns included are for the original Cat's Meow, and you would simply uh, substitute a carbon fuselage for that if you're rebuilding this airplane or something of that nature. Uh, but the patterns included are for the original configuration, and the um, uh, wood sizes and everything are called out. Uh, since this, since the flaps don't fit completely on an eight and a half by eleven, they're um, shown in two pieces. But all of the parts are here in full size for the uh, original configuration. You'll have some nose weight. Have a little earplug. This is going to go on the front of your airplane to um, 
uh, provide a bumper so that if the airplane crashes it's not damaged as easily. You'll have some 1 8 inch rubber for your catapult. Have a catapult handle. Let me get the tape off of here. You want to just carefully kind of I don't find diagonally like that the tape comes off easier. Uh, you'll have some 1 16th inch sheet balsa uh, for your wingtips and uh, grip and pylon and so on. You have a piece of thin vector board foam for your rudder. Uh, 1 32nd balsa for your tail surfaces and dihedral gauges as well. Uh, carbon fiber fuselage. And then you'll have some light one third or sorry, three thirty second balsa for your wings, uh, wing leading edges and the first part, the segment of the wing tips. And then the wing flaps are made from one millimeter vector board. Let's start by popping the uh, wing leading edges out of this sheet. I put some tape on these sometimes because they have a tendency to fall out on their own. And we'll also pop out the wing tips, which come out less on their own. And then we will also take the last wingtip segments out of the 1 16th inch sheet. And we're going to want to sand off all of the straight edges on these to make sure there are no laser burrs or anything of that nature. And we'll do the same thing over here. So the curved edges we're not sanding at this point. We'll deal with them later. So at this point, what we want to do is start trying to make enough room here to lay out um, the entire wing. We'll kind of do it like this. My table has a joint in it that makes it not level over there. Now what we're doing is we are laying out these wings opposed to each other so that we get a um, this will be a right wing and a left wing I know that sounds reversed but you'll understand why uh, this is the bottom surface of the wing so what we're gonna do is only along this diagonal section we're gonna put some glue And we're concerned about matching everything up on the inside. The outside, if there's uh, not a perfect um, curvature, that's okay. That can be sanded very easily. The inside has to match your flap, though. Now, press this down flat against the table, because this is a different thickness. And we want it... 
we want to provide that upper surface. Um, we want it to be completely flat if possible. So just as proof, this is relatively flat across here. I didn't get it quite right, but we can sand it later. And again, what we're going for is getting this as close into the apex um, lined up correctly as possible. Now, you might think that the next step is let's attach the flaps, but that is not the case because we need to uh, plane and sand these wings down uh, beforehand so that they will match readily with the flaps. So these tips out here are about the right thickness. We'll want to taper them down to save a little bit of weight out at the tips. Um, but back here, not so much. And there's a, um, a jump right here in thickness. So we're going to try to smoothly taper down to that thickness, and then out at the tip we'll taper down a little more. I'm going to use a razor plane to do that. there. So I'll take one swipe out here on the tip and maybe one more. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on this one so we make sure we're making a right wing and a left wing not you know, two right wings or two left wings. Just check to make sure everything's about the same thickness. That looks good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bevel this rear edge to about right here to get it down to the right thickness for the vector board. And you can actually slide it up against there. We actually find that we can taper down out here a little as well, which we'll do in, in just a minute. So what I'm doing is I'm just angling along like so. the edge of the vector board to check that we're close to the same thickness. Leave this a little bit thicker than the vector board if possible. And we're going to take off a little bit more material off of our tip here. And that just lets us save a little bit more weight. Now we'll get all the curly bits out here, and we'll repeat that procedure on this side.
and then we'll do the same thing as before out here. I think I missed a little bit here. There we go. Oop. Now, I just screwed something up and I'll show you what it is. If you're not careful, you can whack out a little piece of this on the edge. Razor planes can be really bad about that. And so that piece is right here on the end of the shaving. And I'm going to glue it back in. Try to avoid doing what I did, but in the event that you ever do, this is how you fix it. We'll fix that with sandpaper actually right now because it is time to start sanding everything. that nice and smooth and then we will come around here and just start smoothing and feathering everything in together So there you have two thus far matched uh, wing panels. Let's take the foam for your flaps and we're going to try to get all of the laser burrs off of this. This edge is cut a little bit close but there's still some um, material here that we'll want to remove. You want to do this with a sharp razor blade because sanding this foam does not work exceptionally well. I guess that's part of the durability of it is that it resists being abraded. I'm not really worried about the tabs along here because that's the trailing edge of the wing. And we're going to set this panel aside for the moment. We're going to check the fitment of everything. And it looks alright. I've got a little bit of a gap up here. We may be able to tease that in. Yeah. Okay, that's because it wasn't laying quite flat. There we go. 
I'm going to have my CA accelerator ready to go. And you don't want to put a heavy bead of glue down, but you do want it to be strong enough that the flaps are going to remain attached, especially in the center area. Out here at the tips, they're under less stress. Now you have a few moments to work with the foam because this glue is, its hardening process is retarded somewhat by the, um, the foam. I don't know what causes that within the foam's chemical structure, but it just does. And so now we're going to work our way out to the tip here. And lastly, make sure we're closed up out here, too. And we just want to check to make sure we have full contact out here. Everything's fully attached. Yes, it is. So there we go, we'll flip it back over. The important thing here is again, we're trying to make sure that we make a left wing and a right wing. Here again, checking attachment, everything looks good. So we'll go ahead and start the gluing process. Now you'll notice that I'm dipping the accelerator out and that is because I want to minimize the exposure of the foam to accelerator because it will soften the foam and cause it to warp and you can run into some potential problems um, if that occurs. Now at this time, we want to just run our hand around here see if there's any rough spots. There are a couple. So we will gently remove those. Now let's flip both wing panels over and we can proceed to shaping the top. Let me close this up so I don't risk spilling it. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove any roughness of that glue line is usually you'll get a little bit of flashing up there um,
Now, one thing I want to go ahead and address right now is I notice I've got my flap is a little bit long here. So I'm going to use the straight edge to cut that short. And I want it actually to be shorter than my wing because it has to clear the fuselage as it curves down. We'll do the same thing on this side. Somehow I got that flip. There we go. Okay, so both wings are right side up. Yes, they are. So the beveled edge is down here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bevel off the leading edge. We will first just do a light sanding to get the profile of our leading edge correct. Now, what we want to do is we don't want to come up with a, a fancy airfoil. What we're going to do is we're going to just cut, cut a bevel in the leading edge. And that is seems to be the most efficient profile for this type of wing um, for the speeds that it flies. So one way you can do that is to just carve it around with your razor plane. Another way to do it is just set this on the edge of a table. You can run around like that. Um, since I've done this a bunch of times, sometimes I just do it like this. Almost there. So you can see we've got just this beveled cross section. I don't have it sanded, uh, to, I don't have it sharp here yet, but we will take it to that point. I do want to bevel it pretty much all the way around. Now we'll repeat the same thing over here. Again, making sure we've got left wing and right wing.
let's go ahead and we'll sand this off. And now they're matched. Perfect. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and bevel these for the dihedral. And you can use uh, the dihedral gauges to actually get this exactly right by laying the uh, dihedral gauges out here and then you would uh, sand vertically. I usually can get it fairly close this way though. That's about right, right there. Let's go ahead and build out our little dihedral gauges. So we're gonna snap these two little pieces out that have the holes in them. And then these two guys. And so you've got this part that's got the little piece sticking out in the middle. It allows you to stick it in like that. There we go. I'm going to check my dihedral bevel one more time like this. It's pretty close. So we're going to set the sandpaper on there just to weigh it down. And then we put glue all the way down here. There we go. Now I'm going to sand a flat in the bottom of my wing right here. And that way the wing pylon can fit in there real well. Now before I do anything further, I'm going to cut a slot in the tip of the wing. So you can see what that looks like right there, out there at the wingtip. 
And that lets me trim the airplane more easily. So I'm going to go outboard of this um, last join. I'm going to make a slit, and then I'm going to go over about a 32nd of an inch, make a matching slit. And I don't want to come all the way up to the end of the foam. We'll pull out that little piece. So now you've got this slot just like that. Do the same thing on the other side. Now I can lay this on the edge of the table. And I can roll my hand across it like so. And now I have my flap curvature on that side. I'll do the same thing over here. go so the flaps are drooped down like so and like so next let's take this sheet with all the little bitty parts that you took your wingtips from and let's cut the pylon pieces out Now, these are not completely flat. They have a little bit of incidence in them. So if you assemble these backwards, you'll see that there's a height difference here and here. And now if I turn this around, they match up perfectly, which means this end is the front. What this does is it gets you just a few degrees of positive incidence in that wing so that you don't have to bend in a whole bunch of up elevator in the tail. And I just got mine glued on wrong, so that should be an extra adventure. This is the front. And glue it onto the wing. Starting at the leading edge, and you notice it doesn't go all the way back. It doesn't need to. And now everything's statically attracted to wing. Now if you want to save a whole bunch of weight, you can um, sand this fuselage down. I'm just going to give it a very light um, sanding to rough it up. Um, the reality is this fuselage is substantially heavier than it, than it needs to be. Um, but that lets you tune for whatever ceiling height you're flying in. So if you're flying in a real low sight, 
sand this thing down to where it's fairly thin. Uh, if you're planning a, on launching, you know, 50, 60 feet up, you're going to want to not sand it quite as much. correctly so I don't have it written down where I need to all right seven and a quarter inches back from your um, leading uh, from the front of your fuselage is where you're gonna mount the wing straight this way um, is very important otherwise the airplane becomes quite challenging to trim out Now is also a convenient time to cut out our hand grip and glue it to the fuselage. Now if you're into uh, wingtip launching these, you don't need a hand grip, um, but I am going to put one on here just so that you see how it's done. I'm going to harden up that area with CA so that it doesn't split easily. and then. We will glue it right up here where the fuselage and pylon meet. Actually, no, that's the wrong side because I'm right-handed. Let's try that again. attachments on uh, later because they'll get in the way of attaching the tail. So let's pop your horizontal stabilizer out. And what we want to do is we want to taper this out to where it's pretty much paper thin out at the edges close to it
Now, there are a couple of ways you can attach your horizontal tail. You can attach it flush at the back, or you can slide it up a little bit so that you can hand grip for catapult launching like this. We supply this little grip down here, which allows you to put a grip underneath. So it's whichever you prefer. If you like to grip it back here for catapult launching, or if you like to grip it underneath, um, or if you're not going to catapult launch it at all, just put the tail all the way back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prop this fuselage up. so that I can get my tail on level. I don't want any stab tilt because flapped gliders do not respond well to stab tilt. Next, let's pop out this piece right here, which is the leading edge of your vertical tail. this a little bit, but that's all I would do. I would not try to thin it down or anything. And then, I've got to figure out, there we go. Pop out our, the rest of our vertical tail. This part is the leading edge. Just the wooden part up here so that it's clear of the leading edge and it's, since I'm right-handed I'm going to glue in some right rudder. As you can see I'm offset a little bit this way to give me right rudder for proper glide trim and launch trim for that matter. Now, next part that I want to attach is this little semicircular piece. This is my finger grip, my forward finger grip. Now, if again, if you're tip launching or if you are catapult launching, you won't. Um, if, if that's all you're using the plane for, you won't need this. But if you're doing traditional javelin throw, what you're going to want to do is set this up to where this position feels comfortable. So if I'm too far back, I don't have good control. If I'm too far forward, I feel stretched. But right about there, for me, feels good. And some people will even put a little bit of sandpaper on that just to um, give them a better grip. Like I said, if you're tip launching or if you're catapult launching only, uh, you won't need that. Now, again, for the catapult launching, <coughs> um, 
for catapult launching, I'm going to want a rear grip, and I do plan to catapult this model, so I'm going to put the rear grip on mine. And I like to put it up here on one side, slightly ahead um, of the horizontal stab. You do want to make sure this is firm. Um, firmly against the tail boom, otherwise it acts like a rudder. So there is how it is attached. Okay, next to the last part to attach is the catapult hook, assuming you're catapult launching. of the hook here I'm going to want to harden up with CA and then I'm actually gonna hit that with some accelerator and then the top of it we're gonna glue to the fuselage just a little ways back from of the nose. Just like that. And we want to make sure it's straight up and down. Now the last part is you want to put a nose bumper on this airplane. So you take your, your plug. There are a variety of ways to attach it to the front. What I like to do is actually just press it around like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to put glue in here and then to speed this process along so you're not left holding it waiting for it to dry go ahead and put accelerator up front and then you can just squeeze this guy back around So that bumper protects the airplane from hard impacts with the floor. Next, let's balance this airplane. So the center of gravity needs to be right about the front of the flaps, maybe just a little bit aft of them. And my airplane, just for sake of argument, is actually balancing pretty close. I may put a tiny dab of clay on the nose, but um, that's it. And I like to glue my clay to the airplane because it tends to come off if you don't. That's where the CG needs to be, um, if not slightly after that. All right, so that completes the construction. Um, I'm going to show you show. I'm going to show you some basic trimming, and then uh, direct you towards a full trimming video for this airplane. You're in the wrong place, man. I don't care. I'll get out of the way. I'm launching that way. I'll get out of the way. All right, so we have our airplane, um, our cat's meow, ready to test glide for the first time. And nice.
So the airplane is showing a steady right hand turn, uh, fairly wide, which is what you want on one of these. You don't want it to turn super tight. You can make them turn very tightly, especially if you put a whole bunch of camber like this in there. Um, you can slow them down enough to turn really tight if you need to, if you have a, a small flying sight. Um, I am gonna add a tiny bit of up trim to the left side because I'm right-handed so I always want to add up elevator to the left side if I'm uh, launching right-handed. And we'll give it one more. And that's beautiful. Now it is possible that I could get that glide slowed down even more, but I would wait to get into a large indoor site to fully evaluate that um, after I've got my launch trim sorted, which is where we want to go next. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try a little bit harder of a launch. Right at the wall there. Okay, now we see something we don't like. So the airplane is starting to dive out. Um, as you launch. Now there are two ways to fix that. One is add more up elevator, but the other is, let's find a sharp edge here, and I'm going to rub this wingtip against it. You can just crack the wingtip to do this, but what I want to do is start curving this wing up a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to just crack it a little bit. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'll re-glue as needed. And so you can see I've got the wingtips flared up a little bit. I want a little more on this side. Alright. Much better. That took care of that problem. All right, so we're running out of space in the living room and the weather outside is, at least at present, is not suitable for flying this. So we'll just give it one more run. I'll let you kind of see what you're looking for. Which is that. Okay, so what we're, what we're heading towards is getting the airplane to climb up and slide around into the glide. Um, I'm pretty much at the limit of what I can show you in the living room. Like I said, we've got trimming videos for how to fly these. These don't take a whole lot of wing twist to um, trim your bank on the launch. Uh, basically, you want it to be about neutral because you don't usually see these unless you have an extreme warp in your wing you don't see them tending to spiral in. However, if on launch you find that the airplane is going up and trying to crank over, you're going to twist this wing. You're going to take the entire wing and you're going to twist it so that the outer panel twists up like that. Twist it to raise the leading edge and lower the trailing edge. And you want to do that with the wood portion, not the foam portion. Now if you find the airplane is overbanking or underbanking in the glide, you can fix that with the flaps because the flaps don't have a whole lot of influence on launch but they do influence the glide. Um, you can slow the glide down further by increasing your wing camber because I know some people like their flaps all the way down like that. Um, this is about where I find mine perform the best. So um, evaluate what's giving you the best performance uh, for, the tech, for your kind of technique for flying the airplane. So that completes the build video for the version 2 Cat's Meow from JNH Aerospace. We hope you have enjoyed this and check the airplane out on our website. Check out the trimming videos in the links below. And we hope to see you at the, uh, at the flying sites, not at the field, uh, flying Cat's Meows and other F1N and AMA catapult gliders. And we'll see you later. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com 
for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.